three, two, one, and we are live. What's up, CP family? Chad here with Tim. Tiebreaker series one zero eight. Thanks, thanks guys for joining us. Yeah. Tim, welcome back. I know you've been out and about with uh, you know travel opening up again, tournaments opening up again. You've saw a couple of our athletes, and you're back here. Yeah. Um, so it's good to have you back. Thank you. And we're gonna dive it, dive right into it. Um, I know you've been spending a lot of time in the trenches, on the road, on the phone with parents, getting to the bottom of um, the situation and, and what the real issues are from their perspective and everything like that. What are some you know, factors coming up? What are some situations or difficulties that are coming up as common themes with all the talks that you've been having with these parents and everything like that? Yeah, well, you know, some of these reoccurring themes, and one of them is is, is this um, concept called comparing. And there's so much comparison in this sport, and actually in any sport, but in this sport of tennis and this development process, everybody's comparing with other athletes. Maybe you're being compared to a pro. Maybe you're being compared in ranking or rating. And again, that's really problematic. And that's what I see a lot as one of the reoccurring issues that uh, keep flaring up. What are, what are some things that are, what are like some discussion points or things that are coming up that's making you identify this? Like what would be examples of negative things that are coming up when comparing happens? Well, one of the main things is that it, it creates um, this, um, this kind of this energy of disbelief or the player not believing in their capability. Um, that they're not quite good enough or they're not doing quite good enough or they're not measuring up. And especially when they're being compared to another athlete, it, they could be, be compared to a sibling in the family. You know, I come from a very large family and so there's a lot of comparison that went on back in the day. And, um, and it, it's very destructive. And so it, it wreaks havoc on the player's confidence and the player's belief. And at the end of the day, I know you parents, you all want them to be able to perform with their capability in crunch time at those tournaments. But this is when it really comes down to um, where you really see it actually really clearly because these tournaments place that demand when they don't quite feel very good or they can't trust their instincts, for example. And so whenever you're comparing, you're actually uh, putting the demand on their ability to believe in themselves and to trust their capability, trust their instincts, even trust their training. And, and so that's what I see a lot as a kind of a reoccurring theme. Yeah, absolutely. And this just this whole idea of comparing is really prevalent for, you know, young people in general. I mean, like in high school and middle school, everyone's kind of comparing. There's just that 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 attitude. But you're absolutely right where tennis is like it's it's a, it's to an extreme, mm -hmm. at least in my experience, compared to other sports. I don't know if it has to do with the rating systems or the rankings or just the idea of, of seeing yourself stacked up to everyone in your age group in the nation just by logging onto a website, you know, and that, so the sport itself by design isn't doing any help in this creating a non-comparing environment. So the parents really have their work cut out for them. What can parents do to foster this environment where a comparison is keeping at a minimum. Yeah, well, parents actually, they can control the environment um, because that's kind of where the table talk is. So um, sometimes I think well, as parents, we're all guilty of um, making some of these comments that will compare to the fact that um, you're not improving as much or as fast as this player or things like that. And we just have to be more uh, sensitive to the fact that we want to build their confidence. We want to build their belief and we want to like continually help them trust their decision-making ability and trust their instincts so that when they're actually competing, they can believe in something um, and, and perform to their capability. So I think we just have to ask ourselves, you know, as parents, we have to ask ourselves, is what the, that table talk is, what the, that narrative is, is that actually building up their belief in themselves and or is it, um, um, is it helping them or is it fostering um, like a doubting kind of energy that they're doubting themselves? And, uh, and I think that that's really what we have to ask ourselves before we got, actually let those messages um, go across to them. But also the coaches, you know, when they're, in, when they're on the court, it's the same thing with coaches. And as parents, we can kind of um, maybe 
take the coach aside if we find some of that narrative um, with comparison that we're noticing because now we're more sensitive to this, right? Um, that's why we're having these talks so that we can give some kind of, um, you know, just help to parents that, that you need right now in this and where you are in the development process. And so when you do come across that on the court talk, then take the coach aside and just say, hey, listen, um, this is really tough for my son or daughter when you're actually making comparisons because that's one of the things we value not to compare because that only leads to some destructive behavior on their part. Yeah, that's that's huge. And just having this awareness is going to go a long way because you'll you'll trend in the right direction because a lot of the times the same thing can be said in a different way um, if you're saying it in, with the intent to build belief rather than create doubt. So let's say you need to make an observation, like you need a, and you could say it one way that's a very comparing manner, like, like Johnny is hitting it like that, why can't you? Or you could say it in a more built, the same exact thing that you want to let them know, you could say it in a more building up manner, you know, and that makes the world of difference. So just having this awareness of right before you speak, is this building belief or just creating doubt and go to the building mm -hmm. belief route and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be a huge difference, right? Yeah, and again, just as another side note is that sometimes we have a tendency to even compare coaches um, or compare training. So, hey, this person's training at this place, so that actually is supposed to mean something, you know what I mean? And then, of course, the way the player is receiving that is that maybe I'm not getting that comparable training and that kind of thing, so I'm missing out those kind of things. So again, it's just that awareness of being more sensitive to uh, putting a, a narrative out there that will um, cast doubt on the situation that the player will have on their ability of themselves and also their capability. Yeah, and I, I, think, I think one factor that brings this comparing thing to light is parents, players, everyone kind of needs validation of, am I on track? Am I where I need to be? I'm here where do I stack up with everyone else? But r really, a lot of people don't really know where they are even supposed to be at or where they're, they're really at. Um, do you want to talk about that? Like a little bit on just the, the, the muddiness in the water when it comes to where am I at? Am I on track? And mm -hmm. does it even matter where everyone else is at and if everyone else is on track and how that dynamic works? Because I think a lot of this unknown and this need to, are we on track, leads to automatically comparing to other people. Yeah, first of all, who, who forms this track? Like, there's, there's this track out there. Like, who puts this track out there? And it seems like this track is kind of moving and moves at a rapid rate or, and it never slows down and you have to, you know, and you're kind of caught in this, in this like, rat race on this track. And so, you know, if you think about it and step back, who's actually really putting that track in place? And that's kind of interesting because very, very few people really have the knowledge of being able to know where somebody actually is in the development process. Um, first of all, you have to experience it from this point to this point and actually have experiences that you can at least base some kind of a perspective on, which would be really helpful. And there are people out there, but there are not that many. And so that would be one place that you want to... Um, I think that we can provide a lot of guidance in CP because we have a lot of experiences and things like that. And so, um, and then that track, when people talk about this track, there's a lot of assumptions. And so it doesn't even come from factual basis. It just comes from, I think this, is, or I heard this, that this is kind of where you're supposed to be. And then of course, this track runs in the system, it runs in age groups. And so you have a track that runs, and so you kind of get on another track because you all of a sudden shifted your age. You know, your age shifted, and so you got to go shift to this other track and be on that track now. And that has nothing to do, have no bearing on whether or not you're even capable yet or you mastered any kind of skills that allows you to go on this track, which might even be a faster track. And yet people can't even keep up with it because they never really accomplished what they need to do on this track. And so who's making up all these tracks? And so that's what the system does is they actually label you somewhere that you need to be on this track or that track and then of course that leads into more comparison yeah. um, and that's where results can be really misleading too because especially at the younger ages people can win just doing the wrong stuff or maybe they just grew really fast 
compared to everyone else and or maybe they're just moonballing it all the time and racking up wins and that's just not going to fly where other people are really working on their game they're working on certain aspects maybe it's not coming into fruition on the tournament court yet but they would actually be further along on the development path even though the results might not be showing that's a very common thing right it absolutely is um, first of all all development is individual personal you know and everybody develops it different um you know just at different stages and it just at different times and so some mature faster and um some um they grow at, at different points and the thing about it is is that it's not um what the score is it's really what they're accomplishing as far as the development of mastering certain things that allow them to play the game at higher levels and so you have to have a either you're going to have a short-term perspective or a long-term perspective. And if you're going to have a short-term perspective, you're going to have some long-term consequences from that. If you have a short-term, uh, I mean, if you have a short-term perspective, you have some long-term consequences that may not be very favorable. If you have a long-term perspective, you're going to have some issues on the short term that you're going to have to deal with, but you're going to have to then have patience because you're going to have some different long-term consequences just because you held that line there and were patient and, um, took a long-term approach to the development process. Yeah, it's definitely personalized and not everyone is going to organically grow the same as another person. Um, and we see this at an early age. You have a great analogy with like kids. Do you want to describe about kids learning how to walk and their analogy oh, yeah. of the timing and yeah. everything like that? I think it's really applicable because when comparing comes in, you're like, oh, this kid that's the same age, they're, they're doing this. My kid must yeah. be behind. Um, so you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, I think comparing actually um, inaccurately um, reflects uh, expectation. And so those expectations are um, sourced from um, some information that actually really isn't relevant. It's really not even reality. And so you're making all these assumptions and then you have these expectations. And then, of course, because they're not built on some solid foundation of facts, then you're going to miss those expectations and that's when a lot of people blow up and things like that so i i correlate that a little bit to a child that's going through the process of say crawling to walking to running no parent would ever go ahead and push them to run faster or to walk faster and if they didn't walk they would still be patient and allow the process uh, instead of just telling them hey dude you need to walk i can't believe that you're not walking uh, even though we might be proud you know that they're walking you know now okay but we don't ever force that issue. It's like organic. And if any, if you ever talk to your friends, if us parents ever talk to any of your friends and you ask them what day or how many days did it take to walk, I'm sure that you never get the same answer. They would never walk on the same year or day or whatever. It would always be at different times. That's how individualized and organic that process is. And that's really similar to anything that you're really working on and developing that has skills to master like tennis. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why you can't even rush it on these things. You know, there's a lot of child psychologists that say forcing a kid to walk earlier or kids that walk really soon, it's not the best for their brain development and everything like that. So when you're trying to let this grow organically in development, that's what we're trying to do. It's trying to a little bit organically. So it's firmer and it's not going to collapse under pressure. People that are rushing it, it will collapse. It will collapse. Well, it, by rushing it and not having patience, you're going to miss steps, just like you would if you were if you're going to rush through the process of them walking to running. You're going to miss some steps on some development. That's why, even if they win all the time, you're going to miss some steps. If they're winning all the time at a young age, and you don't know which steps they're going to miss, but if they have to go ahead and learn things, discover things, and usually they do that more in a loss than they do in a win. Because they're winning all the time, they don't really, you know, what do they have to work on, basically, kind of, you know. So those are all really good things. And yet most people, like, we think that that's terrible. That that's just something that I can't believe my kid is going through. I feel so bad for my kid. And, and a lot of times as parents, we, we actually protect that. And, uh, you know, that's really not... Um, that's really hurting them it, when it really comes down to being able to go ahead and compete at these higher levels. You can't be soft. You have to be able to have these experiences to really um, grow and develop, discover, 
how you can improve um, different perspectives on things. We've got to give them some space to be able to do that. And that's why we have to allow them to go through the tough stuff. Um, and that's why I take a long-term development approach, not a short-term de development approach. And the, the results just aren't a priority. It's, it's what they're achieving, those really cool things they're achieving in the process. And those re results will just come. Absolutely. Trust the process, be patient, and stop comparing. There's enough comparison going on when you're talking UTR, when you're seeing what you're ranked in this tournament, what your opponent's UTR is. There's so much comparing going on. Just stop. Just stop with the talking that's, that's comparing. It's going to save you a lot of heartache and headache, and it's going to be better off for everyone involved. Well, and, and it's going to allow your, your child to just have a lot less anxiety. Yep, that's and that's reason. pretty huge. <laughs> so. Yeah, we'll, we'll end it on that. Trust the process, guys. Love you. Thanks for uh, tuning in. We'll see you next time. Love you all. Peace.